start the recording as well. Just in case you didn't know, we're all being recorded. Um, let's see. Just about everybody, I think, has been unmuted. I believe you have to uh, like push a button if you're going to speak. Um, with the exception of Steve, who's on a phone call. Maybe I can mute him. There we go. Okay, so I uh, got the recording going. Got some of you guys in here. Welcome. Uh, Fiendish is, will be joining us here in a quick sec. He is finishing up the ESTN stream. Those guys go on forever, it seems like. Um, got the mods jumping in here to uh, see if they can help us get everything going. And then, uh, obviously, you know, first and foremost, we just want to start out by saying, you know, we're trying to be more communicative uh, with the community, especially the GM Dunes and all of our holders. And so that's the reason that we're going to start doing these AMAs uh, every week. So uh, we're going to try to do them every Friday and we'll go ahead and stagger the times this way, um, you know, depending on where in the world people are, they'll be able to listen in. We don't want to continue to do them at the same time every single time and, uh, you know not be fair to everyone so a little bit about why we're going to be doing these and uh, kind of how we're going to be doing them moving forward so um yeah i mean uh ultimately the, the goal is to you know open up this communication and answer any questions that you guys have about the project and what's going on uh a lot of the gm dunes were privy to the kind of unpolished version of the staking strategy uh, that we've been trying to implement here recently. And so, you know, we're working towards that goal and obviously uh, going to try to get that out to you guys as soon as possible. Uh, Q2 is when we have a lot of really exciting stuff going on. So, you know, I know there's been kind of a wait, but, uh, you know, the exciting things are all getting ready to start happening. So, Obviously, you know, the private and public sales for Verse will be this quarter, uh, making sure that we get listed, that token listed on decentralized and centralized exchanges. Uh, the staking strategy, obviously, is getting ready to be implemented here uh, pretty soon. We have a, a pitch deck for the staking that we're working on, and we're going to have that out to you guys, uh, hopefully, as soon as possible. Uh, I would think next week at the latest, but um, I don't want to give an exact day, so I'm just going to say that I'm hoping that it'll be ready for you guys next week so obviously the GM Dunes will be getting locked so if you haven't yet uh, acquired 10 Soul Sand and GM Dune status and that is something that you're interested in um, there are a lot a lot of benefits that come with being a GM Dune um, and we will be locking that soon so coming up on the last chances obviously to you know be able to uh, get that status that GM Dune status so like I said, a lot of really interesting and fun stuff, and obviously the game trailer uh, is being developed. If you guys haven't seen the teasers already, um, go check them out on the YouTube channel. We've got the Solanaverse YouTube channel, um, and the though there's not music in them. Uh, I didn't have time at the time to get music in there, and thought you guys would probably just want to at least see, you know, all that's been going on. And in the actual game trailer, there's going to be you know, epic music and much more than, than what we showed here, but we just wanted to give everybody kind of a, a sneak peek into, you know, some of the stuff that we've been trying to look at over the course of these last few weeks and get everything together. So, uh, hopefully that brings everything up to speed. Uh, I'd love to, you know, get some interaction and, and some questions from you guys, uh, and, and kind of go that way with it. So do, does anybody have questions that they'd like to ask? You know, yeah, I got, I got a question. Perfect. You there? Oh, can you still hear me? No, sorry. We can hear you now. Oh, okay, sorry. 
Um, I was saying uh, regarding combining of lands, what if a DM uh, has a mix of sand and glass? How would the, the lands combine given that sand tier and glass tier are um, different value locations? So that's a that's a great question. Um, we don't actually have the map prepared just yet, but the way that I envision that going is uh, kind of, this is simplifying beyond what it'll be, but uh, so think if you had Solar City kind of in the middle and then surrounding Solar City, uh, you would have like the epic tier lands. And then to the outside of that, you'd have the glass lands kind of surrounding that. And then to the outside of that, you'd have the sand lands surrounding that. And so even if you had, you know, sands that are mixed up of sand tier, glass tier, and epic tier, uh, it would just basically be like an outside in type of property. Um, and that's hopefully that explains it. Um, again, I know it's kind of over, oversimplifying, um, and I'm trying to get a map for you guys uh, so that we can really kind of demonstrate what it'll look like. Um, I've been pressing the devs for to try to get like, a, you know, a topographical or an overview map uh, of of what we have so far from Solanaverse, and then once we have that, we can kind of use it to outline that and show you guys exactly what I mean, but. Hopefully that gives enough of an explanation uh, to kind of show you what, what I mean in terms of how that would work. Uh, yeah, and I actually have one follow-up if I could. Absolutely. Regarding that same, okay. Um, so let's say like my particular instance, I have 16. So I have you know more than one, but less than two. Would I be able to combine all uh, 16 or would you cut up at 10 and those other six will just have to be individual? Um, so it's a great question. We haven't 100% answered that yet. Uh, at this point, you'd still be able to combine them all. Uh, where you'll miss out is on the extra land in Solar City. So don't forget that for every GM Dune, you're getting an extra land in the capital. And so, you know, right now, I think that you may be able to combine those 16. I don't think that we're going to take that away from you guys um, that are kind of like in between or in limbo. Um, but, uh, again, you'd be missing out on that extra land. And, and I've got to get the exact answer. I apologize that, you know, I don't have a 100% answer to give. But, um, yeah, that would be where you'd be missing out. So, you know, again, if you've got two GM Dunes, then you'd be getting twice the amount of land in Solar City. And so, obviously, uh, the capital city, Solar City, that's where there's going to be the most traffic. That's where there's going to be the most going on. That's going to be the land that's obviously worth the most. Um, and so, you know, in order to be able to get those lands, it's one of those for every GM doing that you hold. I appreciate it. Thanks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did anybody else have some questions? I'd love to uh, get some more feedback. Even to expand on that just a little bit, uh, if you guys can think almost like a donor, but don't necessarily say this is circular, but um, the being closest to the center of the city, that those are the high-valued lands, and then in concentric areas going out. But again, whether it's circular or rectangular, that's not really the point. And then um, the uh, again, the higher-valued ones being for the, the city center. Absolutely. Anybody else? <laughs> So I guess we can uh, start talking about some of this uh, staking stuff. Um, and if you guys have questions, you know, don't hesitate to kind of stop me uh, and let me know because I'd love to really answer them. Um, but let me go ahead and pull this up. And uh, we released this as a PDF to the Dude Masters, obviously, for feedback from you guys. Um, and looking forward to that. Obviously, so far the response has been uh, overwhelmingly positive, and I love that. So good to see that, obviously. Um, let me go ahead and get it pulled up here. All right, let's see. I've just got to find the file really quickly. find it pretty quickly here sorry guys perfect all right so <clears throat> we're gonna be doing a Twitter space with our partners uh, that are 
been working on a lot of the staking stuff with us, uh, and they'll be able to answer questions about staking more in detail. Um, but you know, some of the really exciting stuff is the staking pools that we're going to have. So obviously, there'll be you know a single token pool for Verse, uh, where you're able to stake Verse and earn. Uh, we'll have you know some type of high annual percentage yield, like eighteen percent, uh, somewhere between twelve and eighteen. Obviously, uh, you'll also be able to stake Soul in there uh, as well, and then we'll be able to do multi-chain rewards. So you know we'll have rewards in the form of Verse and then in the form of Soul and some of the other chains uh, as they get in. And so some of these uh, pools are obviously gonna generate quite a bit and you know you have the, obviously the yield farming platforms that we're going to be bringing in that have to do with those staking pools so if you're not into yield farming uh look into it if you're into yield farming it is something that's going to be possible uh also through staking you're going to be able to unlock you know extra things right so uh the more you stake the more you're unlocking right so you know during that time you'll be able to unlock different areas within Solanaverse that people not everyone has unlocked You'll be able to unlock the staking pools uh, that we've created. And so a lot of these pools are going to be what's called Zap diversification pools. So essentially, it's kind of like an index fund. Um, and it makes the diversification of the assets uh, on Solana very simple, right? So, um, you know, those pools will have different diversified uh, t tokens in there. Uh, and each token will be assigned a weight based on you know value to USD or value to Verse or Soul, uh, and then those pools will be made. So if you've ever used Balancer Dex, it's very similar uh, to you know what we're able to do with Balancer Dex on Ethereum. Well, actually, Balancer is cross chain, but ours will be uh, as well. So it's really similar to kind of what's going on there, but the difference is uh, you'll be able to stake uh, Verse. And then that verse will actually be backed by all the other tokens in the pool. Uh, it'll be split into, you know, a percentage uh, when you put it in there. So as you deposit verse into the contract, you know, the zap pool will uh, create synthetic LP tokens that are backed by the prices of all the other tokens in the pool. Uh, and then, you know, you'll be able to stake those LP tokens then, uh, like, as if you were yield farming, obviously you will still reap the rewards of having them, but then you'll be able to stake those LP tokens and earn, you know, even further rewards, right? So, uh, you know, one stake, the yield is, is basically, you know, equal to the entire tokens basket value uh, plus the staking rewards, right? So it's going to continue to increase the value of those pools the more that you guys stake in them, right? Um, you know, once you go and remove the LP tokens, uh, it's going to just transfer back to Verse. And you'll obviously get the rewards as well that went with the time that you had it in there. So um, different examples of that could be, you know, we could have a pool uh, that has Solana, Verse, Link, Graph, Waves, um, you know, basically Solana blue chip, you know, SPL blue chips. Uh, we could do a diversified pool that would have like Solana, Verse, and USDT, for example. Uh, we've looked into a pool that would have Verse, Solana, and Luna. Uh, and then another one that uh, would contain like the Golden Trio, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, and then obviously Verse as well. And so they won't necessarily all be available to everyone. It'll be kind of one of these things where, you know, you'll be able to pick the one that you want to go to. Uh, and then the more time that you've staked, like in the blue chip pool, for example, uh, one of the rewards for, for doing that staking will be that you're able to open up, you know, the Golden Trio access. And uh, so it won't be available to just everyone. It'll be kind of like a rewards-based system there. And so, um, you know, obviously we'll get further into that uh, during the AMA with FOMO uh, next week. But I just wanted to kind of give a quick, quick rundown uh, and a little sneak peek into some of the really cool stuff that we're going to be doing with the staking. So, um there's more obviously and you know we're going to be releasing this uh, really soon here in the form of a deck for everyone to see so um you know i don't want to give away too much uh, the gm dunes are privy to the full information obviously so you know uh being that those guys are uh, and girls are you know the largest holders they're the ones that are going to be making up the gm dune dow they're the ones that are really really uh, you know, been helping us and we're relying kind of on their opinions uh, when it comes to a lot of this stuff. So if you're interested in 
having your voice heard on an even higher level and you're not a GM Dune, it's definitely something that you want to look into before uh, it's locked up and you're not able to, to get that status. So, um, Really cool stuff there. Obviously, we had all of a few of the teasers come out, uh, and so I apologize that there's no audio in the teasers. Um, in the interest of, of getting them out to you guys, I uh, have been really busy, and I kind of overwent uh, going through the theatrics there just to make these teasers uh, more presentable, and I apologize for that. Obviously, I can have uh, somebody work on that, but I'd rather spend the time, effort, and energy on the actual trailer itself. Um, than just these teasers, but you know we wanted you guys to see kind of all the stuff we've been working on here as far as, as game development's concerned. So um, hopefully you know that's interesting for you guys. Is there um, anything else uh, that we could answer for you guys? Obviously, you know we want to take care of, of your questions. Um, Also, you know, uh, before the AMA is over, I think we can uh, give out um, something. So maybe we'll give out, like, uh, all of you guys obviously already have whitelist spots for the Soul Drifters. Maybe we will uh, do an NFT giveaway of Soul Sand uh, here. So maybe for the best question, uh, we, we can give away a Soul Sand. Or at the end, I'll just do a giveaway that only you guys are eligible for or something. Um, and we can we can definitely make that happen. Is the staking that you uh, described exclusive to Soul Sand holders, or is it uh, open to the? Uh, so that staking will be open to uh, anyone that has verse. So uh, you know you can you don't have to hold Soul Sand necessarily to get verse. You can buy it during public sale, but. Uh, yeah, anybody that has Soul Sand, even just one, will be earning Verse. Uh, and so you're then able to use that Verse in those staking pools. So it will be open to anybody who uh, has the token. But as a Soul Sand holder, even if you just have one, you'll be receiving tokens uh, at no cost to you. So it's not like you'll have to go buy them to make this happen. Wickham was telling me that somebody doesn't have permission to speak. Let me just double check what she's saying here. Eat gazelles. All right, let's see. Here it is. It says you can speak. Uh, you're unmuted. Eat gazelles. He's not in the voice chat right now. Oh, he's not in the voice chat. Yeah, he's here. Uh, he's right here. I got a question. Oh, cool. Sure, go ahead. Um, so, so now that we're coming up on some new uh, mints, will we be dropped land before those? Or when will that happen? Uh, so the land drop is going to be once it's actually ready for you guys. Uh, if you check out the Soul Sand roadmap, land dropping is going to be a Q3. Right, so we had the avatar drop planned for Q1. Uh, it's actually been moved to Q2. Part of that is because we did a redirection on where we were going with that. Um, but the land drop's always been promised for Q3. So uh, essentially, what we're doing is we're building as we're building Solanaverse. Obviously, you know, Metaverse development takes a lot of time, effort, energy, and money. Obviously. Uh, so as we're building Solanaverse, what we're doing in creating this game, obviously a game trailer wouldn't be a lot uh, of fun if there wasn't any characters in it. So as we're creating these character assets, uh, we're making them available to you guys uh, to you know to mint. And so uh, then we'll have the land and the avatars, the game being developed as the game gets to a point in development where we're able to release the land and you guys can actually do something with it. Um, that's when we're going to release it. So we could release the land in the form of an NFT that you wouldn't be able to do anything with. Um, but I think it makes more sense uh, for the floor of it, for the bottom line of it, for the long term, um, to release that land once there's actually, you know, when you could actually log in and do something with it. And so that's why we're holding that back. It's the strategically place where we're, we're going to drop that land Q3 as, as you guys are actually able to go on and start developing on it. Thanks. Absolutely. 
Sorry, I couldn't talk earlier because I didn't have my uh, push to talk set up. Oh, no worries, yes. I, I wish I had figured it out a different way. I apologize for that. I, I, from my side, I don't have to, so. No worries. Um, yeah, so I was just wondering, so the Neo Nexus rug that happened recently, they were kind of like a big metaverse project with, you know, a lot of funding, a lot of expectations. Sure. Um, from initially what you showed us, you showed us some kind of samples of the lands that would be dropped. And since then, it kind of seems like you guys have pivoted away from those kind of uh, sneak peeks. And you dropped some trailers, which are a big leap from, you know, just getting the lands dropped. So is there a way that you guys can start tying in, I guess, realistic development versus like way out in the future? Sure, absolutely. So the trio, the teasers that you guys are seeing, that's uh, that's already developed environment in Unreal Engine. So that's that's all things that we do already have developed. Uh, what we're doing now is kind of, obviously we have the raise coming up for Verse and that, that funding is going to provide us the ability to take it to this level. So the teaser lands that we've put out, that was kind of like where our, our thought process was at the time. And then, you know, obviously we've always wanted to do something as close to or, or on the line with Ready Player One, right? Where it's really more of uh, a fully immersive, playable metaverse, right? And so um, it's it's not to say that those NFT release, those pre-releases of land couldn't still be what it technically looks like, but the, the art style is definitely leaning more towards this realistic art style now um we think it plays better with some of the ips that we're able to get with corporate sponsorship uh and so in order to like really get on some of the big players uh it lends it lends a lot better if we run in this more realistic style art uh, we tried to still make it uh very very similar and feel um to the artwork that we use during the marketing which is uh if you guys like the how will you shape our world how you shape your world gifts and stuff um that was all the art uh, and that artist stuff is a lot more deep than that we gave all that artwork to these guys that are helping us develop the metaverse um and obviously you know bringing in corporate money is going to help all of us in the long run right so i don't know if you guys just saw heineken just finally built uh, something in decentraland and so the more corporate uh, sponsors come in and, and buy and develop land in the metaverse, uh, the more those metaverses will be worth all the landowners, you know, land will go up in value based on that, right? So um, the goal here is obviously to make sure that we're creating something where we can not, not push ourselves away from, from that sponsorship and IP, but uh, to bring it in, right? So. Um, you know, the more the more large companies we get involved in this, uh, you know, the, the better it's going to be for all of us as far as values go. On the last AMA, you had mentioned there was dropped out on the last AMA. Can you hear me? I yeah, I can. Dropping out. I sorry, man. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. okay. Uh, on the last thing you made, there was discussion about uh, renting out or selling Solar City land to these potential corporate sponsors. Is that is that still on the table? And then you know, working in with the GM Dow, you know, we would have. I think I think I saw your post yesterday about fourteen Solar City plots. Is that expected to uh, kind of be rolled up into the corporate partnerships as well, or, or what's going to be the plan for that? That's a great question. Uh, I really like that question a lot. So absolutely, I mean, the whole reason for us, uh, you know, putting time, effort, and energy into trying to get the DAO formed is so that your guys' feedback can actually play into that. Um, I would assume, obviously, that you're all kind of on the same page when it comes to that stuff, but obviously I don't want to make assumptions, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, right now in the GM Dune Fund, there's 140 sands, so it's 14 GM Dunes, which is basically a 14 parcel uh, within Solar City already. So, you know, whether we allocate that back to specific GM Dunes who win it or whether we, you know, uh, allow you guys to sell that land to corporate sponsorships and then or rent it, like, you know, essentially uh, advertising would become, 
um, or sell it. That's another option. Um, as these things come up, though, obviously it would be up to you guys. That that D, that GM Dune, and I'm obviously I'm I hold you know personally more than enough to be in there as well. But you know those are things where we're not gonna take control of that money for you guys, right? Like we're not gonna take control of what that does or what you guys do with that. Um, we're gonna put that stuff up to a vote. It's it's a collective fund and treasury for the GM Dunes, and it's controlled by the GM Dunes. So. Uh, you know, right now I'm the one who's uh, managing it, but there's no reason that we couldn't elect uh, another GM Dune to take over that position, um, and move move that all that stuff into you know a, a new wallet and have one of the other Dunes uh, take over that position. Obviously, it's it's going to still remain to be voted upon though. So you know, we just need to finish getting the du the DAO set up and then. Uh, once we get that set up, then we'll be able to elect, you know, people that we want to do that kind of thing, uh, and make those type of decisions. But yeah, I mean, absolutely, you know, the ability to rent land, whether it be in Solar City or, or anywhere else, is, is always going to be an option. And uh, whoever the owners of that land are, whether it's the GM Dunes or even a single holder, are going to be the ones that benefit from that. All right, great, thanks so much. Absolutely, great question. I can tell you guys uh, something else too. So we've also had some feedback from the community um, on some other ideas uh, that have been brought to us that we're gonna pick some of those ideas and start implementing some of them, take care of obviously that person for, uh, you know, bringing us those ideas and so if any of you guys have ideas you know on, on things that you would like to see or you know ways that we can make the community better we're always looking uh to you guys in order to you know really make this community as best as possible so um if there's things that you guys feel are lacking or missing please just let us know um and we're happy to try to take steps, you know, to implement some of that stuff if, if, if we all are in agreement and think that it's, it's the right thing. So, um, you know, absolutely want to let you guys know that that's uh, on the table. So, I mean, as a member of the, the community, uh, the EM community, I can say with great appreciation that you guys really stepped up to the plate when we had that. I think you cut out. Uh, Sorry, but all good. You were just saying how you know uh, we dropped the ball a lot, and then finally we've uh, come around. I think. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why. I keep... it, it's much appreciated. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah, and I apologize, uh, you know, on behalf of the whole team for kind of we all kind of had our noses down and we're, you know, really grinding, grinding it out. And, and the last thing that we intended was to kind of lose that connection with you guys and with the community. And so, you know, obviously, uh, you guys call us out on it and, you know, we want you to know that, 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 that means the world to us. I mean, um, uh, ultimately this project goes nowhere without a community, right? Like, uh, you guys are the strength behind this entire thing. So, you know, we're blessed to be in the position that, that we're in and we're blessed to have all of you guys. And so, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, you know, your voices are heard and, and, you know, obviously, uh, it's, it's not for lack of, of work on our side. I mean, there's a lot coming out and I think hopefully you guys will see how much we really have been working on, but, uh, there's no excuse for, you know, not letting you guys in on that, you know, you're part of this too. So we want to try to fix that. Question. Yes. Um, two weeks ago, uh, I was able to catch the AMA, and you addressed that you were gonna um, have more regular line of communication. Uh, do you have any plans um, to make more regular, even if it's just uh, you know you're not delivering on content necessarily? I like to at least keep it tabs on what you guys are doing. Um, or any anything anything to improve the communication. Um, I also minted the 
Day of the Dead on Solana, and there was some confusion in chat, I'm sure you are aware, and after some time, uh, uh, there was still a lack of communication, let's put it that way, and it made me sort of worried, at least a little bit, I mean, uh, I'm a GM dude, I mean, I'm quite heavily invested into your project, but, um, yeah, it, um, yeah, it, 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 it's something that I feel like is lacking uh, since you're asking for feedback. So your thoughts on how to get the, I mean, just uh, get the regular updates. That's what it comes down to, I think. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Any plans to, of course, now we're doing the AMA, but any future plans? Absolutely, yeah. So. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, by all means, PG, yeah. Uh, you know, Normally, I think the communication, at least uh, on like the ticketing level and support level, is, is pretty good. Hopefully, if it's not, let us know, and I'll make sure that we're on top of that. I know that we have really great mods, and that they try to be very quick to at least answer or get you guys an answer anytime there's a support issue. So, um, But yeah, absolutely. I, we're going to start doing these AMAs in the community for holders uh, every Friday. Um, and so we're going to try to stagger the times so they won't always be at 2 o'clock. PST. Uh, we want to make sure that we're doing them at different times. This way, you know, we're able to engage the majority of the community over, you know, over the span of the month, right? So, um, you know, I think next week, obviously, maybe we'll throw up a vote and see when you guys think the best time to do one is next week. But um, it, I can assure you that it won't be at the same time. <laughs> um, and so that's just an effort, obviously, on our part to make make that right and, and be around. So. Um, Yes, there will be more announcements, uh, and absolutely, we're going to be doing these AMAs uh, every week with you guys um, to make sure that we're all on the same page, that all your guys' questions are answered, at least to the best of our ability. Um, you know, we might not always have the exact answer, but we're more than willing to get it for you guys if we don't have it. Um, and yeah, that's absolutely the way, hopefully, uh, to kind of fix that issue is is by making sure that we're available to you guys uh, much more often so every friday we'll be having these amas in the in the server for holders anybody who's a holder is welcome again we'll be staggering the times just to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to try to ask their questions live and in person with us uh, and not just have to listen to you know long recordings also it was suggested that we have somebody on the team kind of go through you know obviously these amas can get kind of lengthy um and i get it i mean you know uh watch watching uh watching an ama that doesn't have anything in the in the you know visual and it's just audio you know uh at some and you're not there live so can get a little frustrating so we're going to try to also be doing that where uh, somebody will go through and kind of just get the main points um and do kind of like a cliff's notes version uh so that that way you guys are all able to kind of see what we talked about see what went down see what happened uh during the ama without having to listen to the whole thing but obviously we'll still you know produce the recordings for you guys um uh, so if you do want to listen to the entirety of it uh, you're welcome to awesome that's very very good uh i think feedback um Having a regular thing on Friday is great. At least you know when new info is dropping and then a couple of days later you can go back, but at least you know at Friday there's more info. Um, and it's for your own time to, you know, do the longer research if you want to or read the small concise uh, text. Um, uh, a last thing about the staking. Since we are holding the wallets, you said everything will be okay and um, the credits you get from holding the stones uh, without them being staked currently you will get a reward can you talk a bit more about that is there any development around sure 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 so uh there's there's definitely been more development around the token we're hoping to release the token early q2 uh obviously that'll start with like the private seed sale uh around the private sale uh, we did have, in, uh, have discussion about potentially unlocking that uh, for GM Dunes as well, so that you guys are also able to get on the private sale if you'd like. Um, 
we're like I said, we're hoping to have that you know a, as early as possible this quarter. Um, you had another part to the question, and I, I don't want to not answer it, but I'm uh, doing other things as well. I'm trying to make sure uh, that I'm sending out some tokens to people that filled out the claim form, uh, and so I, I apologize, but um, we absolutely uh, are going to have more news for, for, for the token. That's a vital piece to the strategy of what's going on. You know, There's going to be the VC raise that goes along with that, and a lot of that money is going to help fund the rest of the development of Solanaverse. Um, as you guys are aware, it's not a small undertaking, you know, uh, b building something to this scale, to this scope, you know, it's, it's, it's a large project, it's a large undertaking, um, it's a lot of time, effort, energy, and especially money, you know, if it, we look at like what it costs just to produce, you know, Call of Duty, for example, we're, we're talking multiple, multiple millions, you know, um, and so this, the, stat the strategy here obviously is uh, not that it's just going to be bootstrapped by one or two, you know, separate NFT drops, obviously, but that, uh, you know, we're able to build in enough to the tokenomics and, and the strategy and the pitch decks to where we're going that we're able to, to bring on real money uh, from, from seed sales, private sales and VC investing. And so um, all of that obviously is going to benefit those of us that are holders, uh, you know, to the, to the most, right? So, um, I can't give you an exact day, obviously, uh, yet, but, you know, what I can tell you is it's definitely uh, Q2, which is the next three months from now, and, and I would st I would lean more towards the earlier side, so. I hope well, I uh, answered the whole question, but I don't know if I did, so. Yeah, uh, it's uh, m m mostly, but I was more um, talking about, um, since we're holding the stones in L4 some time already, uh, it, have we accumulated uh, coins? Your answer last time was yes, and um, everything's still okay with that. That was more my question. Great question. Okay, so, yeah. Like, Apologies. Um, <laughs> so absolutely, um, I'm working with Blockchain Wizard Rai Guy, uh, who's now Blockchain Wizard. Uh, and the rest of the dev team to get you guys some type of a dashboard where you're able to access the reporting so that you can see, you know, how many snapshots we've taken, uh, where, you know, if were you obviously on all of them uh, and what that qualifies you for. So, you know, as we've said from the beginning, uh, the, the verse is not only earned through rarity, but also through these random snapshots. And so uh, you don't have to stake. All you have to do is just continue to keep it unlisted and in the same wallet. And as we see, and some people had a question about that. Let me just address it quickly. If you do move it from one wallet to another one, just let us know uh, so that we can let the dev team know. Try not to you know, do that multiple times or a ton of times or every other week you're moving it from wallet to wallet to wallet, right? Uh, but you know, uh, if you guys need to move it from one wallet to another one for security sake or something like that, just let us know and we'll, we'll make sure that we, you know, make sure that you still get the credit for it. Um, we're definitely working on a way of reporting that to you guys uh, and giving you guys access, you know, fingertip access where you're able to actually get that information at any time that you need. So um, I, I, I don't have an ETA for it. Um, I mean, I, it's definitely something that we're trying to work into the new Solanaverse website. If we can get it released prior to the full development of the website, then it'll be on there and ready to go as soon as possible. Um, I can try and get a better answer for you guys on that next week, but I will continue pressing the devs uh, to get that for you guys because I know it's definitely something that you want. But absolutely, this you know you are earning uh, you know rewards and verse just for holding Soul Sand. So there's nothing special that you have to do with it. Um, and in, again, I I really really want to get you guys away where you're able to see uh, all of those snapshots, even if we have to do like a basic version. Um, and like put it on a spreadsheet and make a little graph out of it or uh, you know a little bit something like that we can do it that way um, but I'd really like it to be uh, something where you're able to like That's connect your wallet log in and see you know wh how, how many snapshots you've been around for and what you have acquired based on it so um, definitely something we're working on and I'm, I'm gonna try to get you a better answer next week we got a quick question for you DG Yes. 
Okay, back to the weekly AMAs. Can you put out something at the beginning of the week for the time just so people can plan ahead of time? Absolutely, that's a phenomenal idea. Uh, we can definitely do that. So, uh, obviously, we made this announcement only like 20 hours or six hours or whatever it was beforehand, and I apologize for that, uh, but we didn't want to not do it. <laughs> so, um, I'll try to get these planned by Monday uh, or Tuesday at the latest and make an announcement Monday or Tuesday. Uh, hopefully, that'll give you guys enough time you know, to get prepped and planned for it. Does that sound fair? Yes, it does. That's cool. Next question. I heard you speaking about Verse. Did you say that people had to sign up for to collect the coins or that's automatic? It's automatic. So, yeah, right now it's based on holding. So as long as you don't have it, your Soul Sand listed uh, and Day of the Dead Solana is going to be basically the same thing. Um, at this time, you guys did ask for staking and we're working on that. That's going to be kind of in the cards here in the future very, very soon. But... Uh, for now, it's just based on holding. So what we're doing is taking random screenshots or snapshots uh, of the blockchain of all the holders. And so as long as that those NFT tokens show in your wallet when we do those snapshots, uh, that data is being collected. And so we're working on a way of reporting that back to you guys so that you can see, hey, okay, great, they took X amount of snapshots and I was, you know, they saw my wallet on every single one of them because I didn't list because I, I got, you know, diamond hands. And... This is this is you know where my rewards have stacked up so far based on the fact that I keep holding right, um, but yeah, as of right now, all you have to do is hold and not list, uh, and we'll make sure to make a ton of announcements uh, if that changes at all. Are there Eric, gonna be any holding streaks? Say uh, holding. Holding streaks like rewarded for actually Absolutely. holding and not moving. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, the whole purpose of doing these kind of randomized snapshots uh, is is specifically that, so that we can reward the people that have been holding the whole time. Um, and so that's why we don't announce them. That's why we don't say, hey, we're going to do a snapshot tomorrow at, at 3 a.m., right? Because everybody goes D-list, they get the snapshot, then they go put it back up for sale, right? Um, so that's why we're doing them randomly. Um, but it, it's definitely, again... It, it, I think where the where the hole is is that we're not reporting to you guys when you did qualify for them, right? So um, we're definitely working on getting that part of it fixed. But um, yeah, uh, hopefully that answers the question. If not, I'm happy to. More so that if you're holding it for a one month, you get point one. If you're holding it for six months, you get point two. Like based gain, is there gonna be any sort of? Absolutely. Or no. Yeah. So it's based on the number of snapshots that you qualify for. So uh, just an example, let's say over the course of the next two weeks, we took 10 snapshots um, and your, you know, uh, player one had, you know, one soul sand NFT in his wallet for all 10 snapshots. Player two had, you know, one soul sand NFT in his, in his wallet for, uh, you know, two or three of the snapshots out of the 10, you know, not necessarily in a row, but so it's based more on the amount that you qualify for that way. So the easiest way to make sure that you get the max is to continue to hold and, and not list um, because they are at random. So uh, yes, absolutely. To answer the question directly, the longer that you hold, uh, the more reward you'll qualify for. Uh, DJ, I got a question. Yes. Um, well, I got a couple of them, actually. So uh, with some other Metaverse plays that I've been seeing in the Solana network, it, it seems like they're just kind of like uh, hangout spots, uh, portals being one, uh, Enviro being another. Um, when we build on our land and we put in a building, is there going to be any like connectivity um, possibly with those other environments so we can like go into our building and it would load up our enviro or portals so that's a that's another really great question you know it's, it's obviously something that we are striving for is to have the integration you know inter integration with other projects like those um, that would rely obviously on like us giving them land within Solanaverse and then working with their dev teams to make it happen but there's, there's no reason that something like that can't happen. 
Um, we've talked about doing something similar to that that would just be given to the GM Dunes, it would, so it wouldn't be something that they had to buy at all, where they're able to get like a little hangout pad or an area that's in like a what would be we've been referring to it as like the the HQ or whatever, you know. So you'd have like GM Dune HQ, and then some of the different things in the game aspects of the game. Uh, you know, obviously vehicles require fuel. I, I know we briefly have talked about the Soul Stones a little bit here, and and kind of what that's gonna look like. So there's going to be a way that you guys are able to create the soul stone. The soul stone will then create consumable NFTs such as fuel and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, depending on kind of how much you have, how many NFTs you have uh, staked in it, it'll produce different things. At random, it'll produce different things that are potentially worth more than others. Um, and essentially what we wanted to do is because there's going to be this consumable you know theme going on and there's like obviously things that are just going to run out we wanted to have you know special for gm dunes at hq where like let's just say you know you're hanging out at your place you, you know you've parked your your bike downstairs when you come back down the bike's fueled up for you right like didn't cost you any consumables uh, or something to that effect but it doesn't mean, you know, that we wouldn't have the ability to interact and interoperate with some of these other projects, like like portals, for example, or Enviro, right, where, you know, you've got a hangout. And so the way that I would envision it is kind of like, you know, they've got uh, a block of land or something, preferably, you know, a larger block. But, I mean, that's will we'll remain to be seen how that works, even if we have to kind of give it to them to get them in. I think it's something that we've talked about many times as a team that we're willing to, you know, give land to some of these other projects to make sure that we have them in. Um, but yeah, you, you know, then would go to their building or whatever, and then, you know, be able to find your space uh, that way. And, you know, obviously the ability to jump around will, will, will be there. Uh, but because of what we're trying to do, the, the whole the whole goal is kind of to like make it where, you know, people are walking by things and seeing things as much as possible. So. Um, just like in any other metaverse, though, you'll still be able to jump around, so you'll be able to jump straight to, you know, let's just say your office or your hangout, um, your portal, for example, uh, or, like, walk through an entire building of portals, uh, doors to get to yours, right? So it would be both aspects of that, but it's, it's definitely something that we've been talking about doing. It's definitely something that we want to incorporate. Um, we're trying to work with as many other projects as we can and, and those new partnerships are, are kind of moving forward every other day we're trying to like push the envelope of that so now if you've noticed like a ton of collabs part of that is like us trying to get our foot in the door right like let's do a collab we'll show you guys what we can do you know we'll do some stuff for you guys and and obviously uh you know trying to work towards that goal so a lot of avatar stuff but much more than than just other avatar projects like we've obviously been trying to to forge some of these really big connections with, with projects like that. Uh, the second question I have is um, the airdrops that are given to the GM Dunes uh, later on in the second quarter. Are these uh, soul drifters um, or what what kind of an airdrop uh, NFT is this? And then is it also say like rarity based? So like if, uh, if I hold an Epic, do I get an Epic airdrop? Is it like tied that way? Uh, that's a great question too. So, um, I know we talked about something special for like the Gen Zeros being a like companion uh, of some sort, and so those companions, we we've also talked about potentially making those based on what type of Gen Zero you have. So you know, uh, for example, like a San Gen Zero would have like a hawk, and this is just an example. And, you know, a glass Gen Zero might have a, uh, a small dog or, or a cat or something. And then, you know, uh, an Epic would have like a dire wolf, right? And, and again, I'm just, those aren't the exact things that we talked about. I'm just throwing something out there to give an example. But so that's one example of that. And then the vested airdrops that it mentions, you know, in the Soul Sand roadmap, that's more talking about the verse tokens themselves which is based on rarity. So, you know, sand token, sand holder, a sand NFT, a sand tier NFT is not going to earn the same amount of verse token airdrops as a glass tier or as an epic tier, right? And so essentially the way those work is they're multipliers. I think we had uh, some graphics. Let me see if I can, I'm not going to look for it right now because I want to pay attention, but I'll find the graphics and repost them for you guys. 
Um, cause we did do some infographics that kind of detailed, uh, what that would look like. And so those airdrops, uh, could also contain NFTs. There's, there's no reason that they wouldn't. And I think that in Q2, it'll be mainly verse. Uh, but as the game develops and, and moves forward and kind of becomes more and, and we're able to do more, uh, then it will be more. And obviously, you know, the, the rarity will make a difference, right? So uh, you know, holding an epic is is definitely going to bring you m more achievement or more more uh, reward than holding a sand. Not that holding a sand is is a bad thing, but yeah, absolutely, you're gonna the the rewards are going to be based on those tiers. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, that makes sense. I remember that now. But all right, so last two questions, and I'm I'm done. Um, one, it's uh, Unreal Engine five, right? So. Uh, what system requirements uh, do we need? If, if I have a MacBook Pro, um, am I able to um, utilize the, the Solanaverse with that, or am I going to need to get a different rig? Um, and then the second one, um, you guys talked about, and I believe this was in, covered in the other AMA as well, but um, partnerships and stuff like that. Do you guys have um, some things in the works already? Um, you know, uh, and I guess, I guess that would kind of tie in with your um, ICO, I, I suppose, with the Verse token, uh, allowing them to invest in those seed rounds or? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, touch on the first one first. Um, and I apologize, you guys, for I, I'm just still at work today, so I have a lot uh, of other stuff going on in the background. But um, I'll work backwards, I guess, because I already kind of slipped the first part and I'll have you refresh me on the first part but absolutely that ties into the ICOs some of those partnerships are definitely in the works uh, we've been talking with a number of different uh, companies who specialize in these types of things um, right now we're working with a company called FOMO Labs they're the ones that have been helping us do a lot of the development recently uh, in tokenomic stuff we're also uh, in touch with I can get a list of names for you guys but there's like three or four other companies that we've been speaking with as well. Um, and then obviously we're here in LA, so, you know, I'm going to be trying to make as many more connections around the NFT LA thing. There's also, uh, a D three con coming, uh, in Texas that we're going to be trying to get to. So not just, um, you know, on discord, reaching out to people in real life, going to, you know, NFT based events. I know you guys, a lot of, you know, that we went to, uh, Sean Kelly did a big NFT based event in Vegas uh, like a month or two ago. We went to that. Um, we're going to be at NFT LA live. Uh, at, we're, I'm still trying to get tickets by the time we tried to get the tickets, but uh, I have an in with uh, one of the guys that's speaking and I'm going to try to get you know him to, to hook it up. So I don't want to put his name out there because then I might not get it. But <laughs> regardless, I'm uh, a Magic Eden tic Magic ticket holder, and Magic Eden's having a party on Monday. Uh, I'm gonna try to make it to that party, um, as well as a lot of the external events that are happening, kind of in and around the LA area, based on NFTLA. And then in a few months, there's another one. Uh, I'll post something so that you guys can all check it out as well. Um, that one is in Austin. And uh, let's see, where did I have it? Let's see, that one's called, uh, I think it was D D DeFi or DeCon, uh, but it was with a three, so D3Con. Um, and that one's out in Austin, Texas. We're gonna try to make it to that one as well. So uh, absolutely working on the partnerships, um, you know, not just with other NFT projects for integration in Solanaverse, but also on the you know VC side of things, on the token side of things, um, talk to another company, All Chains, uh, potentially about coming on board to kind of do like all the token based things uh, that we're doing. These guys worked on the tokenomics for Helium as well as a few other really large projects, um, and so we'd be really blessed if we're able to bring them on, you know, in house token guys. Uh, and then I think there's a bunch of different automated market makers uh, that we've been trying to set up meetings with lately. Uh, we're announcing a new partnership uh, probably next week. Um, I guess I can like leak it to you guys. Uh, don't go telling everybody, but um, so if you guys have heard of Acno Ledger, these guys are 
uh, pretty big in the metaverse space. They're partnered with Decentraland, Sandbox, um, a, a lot of the, the big metaverses uh, already, as well as some of the other smaller ones. We just recently partnered up with them. They're going to be indexing all Solanaverse-related NFTs. They are trying to you know, create a marketplace that's specifically for metaverses and an interactivity between metaverses. Um, and so that partnership is going to be uh, being announced either later this week or early next week. Um, and we're really excited about that one. So that's also going to open the door for us uh, because they're partnered with, you know, like Axie Infinity and Decentraland and Sandbox uh, for us to, you know, really get partnerships on that level uh, and really kind of make these connections between metaverses that is kind of the way that I've always envisioned the metaverse looking, right? Where it was kind of boundless and limitless and endless and you can, you know, just because you get to the edge of one map doesn't necessarily mean that that's the end of the metaverse, right? And so um, we're definitely making some really big pushes and steps uh, in, in the partnership direction. What was the first question? Because I want to answer that too. And, and I, I'm i sorry, I'm just my... my yeah, answer. sure, man. It was, um, I know that it's being built on Unreal Engine 5. And I know a little bit of some some system requirements, but... Um, is it is it going to be strictly based to like PC and I need like a GeForce thirty eighty? No, yeah, that's a great. Uh, that's I. As soon as you started saying it, I remember. So, MacBook Pro, right? Yeah. No, you. Uh, just because we're building a new E five, a, a lot of the development side of it is going to require that kind of stuff. But when you're actually gameplay, um, you know, we're going to try to make it where it's as attainable as possible, right? Like we. We, we don't want to make it where it's only VR, right? Where you have to have a, a, an Oculus or a headset to get in, get in there. Um, you know, we, we realize not everybody has a, a, a 3090, you know, GeForce 3090 Founders Edition, you know, in their computer. Um, we, we want to make it where the entry level, the barrier to entry it isn't crazy, right? Because the goal here is to get the most amount of people in there playing and in the metaverse as possible, right? So, um, it's definitely a question that I'll have to ask the developers before I give you the exact answer. But, but what I can tell you is, is that we're, we're doing everything in our power to make sure that it's accessible to as many people as possible. Whether there be like a stripped down version and a better version, there we, we want to make it where everyone's able to get in there. But we also want to make it better than what's available now. So um, Perfect, man. That's, that's, that's it for me. me. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, great questions. Um, you... Like one of the very first M AMAs, you were, you said your vision about the, the metaverse is gonna be more interactive. You're actually gonna be able to do and get in, get on a bike, get in a cab, you know, interact with the newspaper stand, and like all those small little things you kind of see in GTA that you're actually able to play a little bit of tennis on the tennis court that you randomly come across. Right. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So uh, we've been talking with the development team over at Amazon Web Services, as well as with the guys that are helping us develop the environments and the metaverse assets and everything on our side uh, to find out like what we need to do. How is that possible? What are the limitations? Like what's the server requirements? Um, you know, obviously being DeFi guys and Web3 guys, we, we wanted this to be on the blockchain, right? As much as possible, as, as much of it as possible. And so, um, you know, this is going to be kind of a marriage between those two where you're still going to have centralized servers, but operating almost in a blockchain style way where there are container environments uh, on a number of different servers across the Amazon Web Server space. And so as you're moving from, you know, space to space or land to land essentially uh you'll be being passed from container to container and you won't actually like you know the goal is to not have that you know it seems seamless right obviously we want you know you know you want to like get to the edge and you have to wait for it to buffer right like so you know in order to get to the level of a, of, of visual aesthetic that we want we're not able to put everything on the blockchain yet but we're still able to use blockchain interaction. So you'll be able to connect a wallet, select an NFT that's that you're gonna use. You'll be able to um, still absolutely get, get on a vehicle. We're actually 
talking about potentially dropping vehicles with soul drifters where every soul drifter just comes with a base vehicle um from the beginning uh because that's always been you know my thing is you know i i want a metaverse where i can you know really go in and it's more interactive and playable th than what's out there and so 100 percent, peachy you're right like that's that's always been kind of the, the way that i see it and the way that i envision it and we're shooting towards that goal and so uh it's obviously been, you know, a, a lot of learning and, and figuring out what's possible and kind of like pushing some of these devs uh, to really go past the limits of where they're comfortable. But we're, we're definitely making headway and progress there. And I can't wait till you guys see the, the trailer because it's hopefully going to showcase a lot of these things um, to, you know, to get to that level where it's literally, you know, you think of it and, and, and it can be happening like you know, that's, that's the way that I want it. So, I mean, obviously if we have a, a alpha and a beta and, you know, a few different versions before we get to the level of like, com, com, all the way down to, like you said, you, you know, walk by the tennis court and you're playing tennis on it. But I mean, to me, that's the goal from, 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 the, from the get go. So, um, you know, that's always how we've wanted it to be. That's what we're striving for and shooting for, you know, absolutely that you'll be able to get on a vehicle and go take off, uh, and go through the desert and get from place to place. Uh, more importantly, that maybe you know, you'll be able to go to a specific place where everybody's like racing, uh, you know, go to a specific place where everybody's fighting, um, you know, really incorporate these, these other aspects. And so, you know, I don't know that all of it will be there on day one, obviously, but like, we're going to try to get as much of it, you know, for day one as possible and then continue to, you know, build and develop until we get to where we're happy. So, you know, uh, we're going to push to get as much of it ready for you guys as possible, you know, uh, on day one. And obviously the goal is to, you know, have playable, playable version for you guys by the end of the year. So it really just depends, uh, you know, how well we do, I think, with this raise, with this next NFT drop. Um, you know, obviously funds do a lot, right? Like, I mean, the more, the more funding we, we are able to raise and get. Uh, the faster I think we can get to that that end goal, but you know, regardless uh, of of how all that goes, I think that we're going to continue to try to to push towards getting playable you know playable metaverse before the end of this year. And if it means that we have to kind of add some of that stuff on as we go, then 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 that'll be the way it goes. And I'm hoping that you know we we can have what I'm what I'm looking for day one. And so you know, it really just depends. I mean, uh, we'll have to continue to 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 all look at that together as we as we move forward towards it but um you know hey Solana's back over back over a hundred dollars so i mean anything's possible right you said increased funding, funding or uh, possibly people who buy into the project uh, with collaborations or partnerships will increase development uh, time uh, uh, so that would, that would uh, yeah. I'm thinking it would speed it up, yeah. So yeah, yeah. speed up the development. Um, but for how long? If you make a, a guess, if all funding stops today, how long will you be able to keep afloat? That's not realistic at all. But yeah, yeah. That's uh, if all funding stopped today and we didn't bring in another another penny towards the project. It, realistically it's really hard for us to get where we want to go i think we would have to change gears uh and figure out a different way uh to try to make it happen i don't think the vision you know and, and i don't think it was ever the vision was that we were going to be able to build this project for 500 or eight hundred thousand. like you know um but i i don't think that i i i know i speak for myself and i i'm i'm very very close with the, the team it's not like we're you know a bunch of people who didn't know each other before i I'm, I think I speak for them when I say this, but, you know, we're, we're trying to make this happen. You know, we're going to, we're going to do what we can do to make this happen, you know? And so I know it means a lot to all of us personally to, to try to get to the end goal. So, you know, random thing, let's just say no more money came into this day. I think we would try to figure out a way to do the next thing to connect it to it and then make it work a different way or, you know, produce, uh, whatever we're able to produce on a, on a very, very limited budget. And then, you know, use that as the, the showcase and example to try to continue on the funding path. So, 
Um, regardless, we're going to continue swinging, you know, and continue trying to get there. Um, I think we've got a pretty decent strategy in place. I, I, you know, we're in the right area at the right time doing something no one else was really trying to do, right? Like everybody else, I feel like is trying to be like the, the central land or trying to be like sandbox. And I think that we're trying to be different and better. Right. And so, you know, that obviously comes with its own challenges. I mean, you know, trying to do something that nobody else is doing, right? Like there's a, there's a reason nobody else is doing it. It's probably cause they're scared or, or, or don't have the vision. Right. So I know you guys all have the vision and I know we're not scared. So, you know, I, I think we're going to get there and it, it's just a matter of pushing, you know? So, um, absolutely. We rely on you guys though. And, and you know, I want to make sure that you guys know that, that this is all possible because of our community and because of you guys. And, I mean, whatever we need to do uh, to, to take it to the next level, you know, continue to let us know where, if we're messing up, if we're doing good, any of that. Like, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, that was maybe just a little bit of a silly question. Um, I don't want to spread any foot, guys. This is very much not my uh, goal here. Um, but one very critical question. I've been hearing a lot about you know, people getting rugged or people making mistakes and uh, clicking on scams. You hear a lot of yeah, nastiness around the NFT space. And you also hear, hear the term uh, slow rug. And um, I'm not saying anything. I'm not implying anything. I'm a holder of tensile scent, uh, at least. Um, but do you guys think about maybe uh, or are you like showing your face? Like, are you, are you, are you like your digital identity? Are you then willing to pay, like mess it up against your real identity? Or because if I recall correctly, there were only like images and not like oh, sure, links sure. to your uh, uh, social medias. Let me check. Uh, I know. I know on the, even on the Day of the Dead website, which is our first project, right, uh, that it was linked to my LinkedIn, my personal LinkedIn. So from day one, you know, uh, yeah, if you go Just click, if you go me click, being stupid. Okay. Oh, no worries. Even if you go click on the Day of the Dead NFT.io, scroll down to team, Dave, founder, click on, click on that, it'll bring you right to my LinkedIn. Um, so you can match that picture up with the one that we have in the team thing. I think in the team thing, let me just check and see what links I put on here. I've got my Twitter and my LinkedIn profiles uh, are both on my uh, profile in the team uh, channel in the welcome category. Um, and so, you know, if anyone's in Cal, I, in fact, a couple, I, uh, I know the Sandman, he, uh, in our, in our server, he's the Sandman. His, his regular uh, username is um, Stand Up Jixer. Uh, like the motorcycles uh, I'm going to be meeting up with him in person um, at the Formula Drift event in Long Beach if anybody's into cars or drifting at all and, and you want to come and, and, and hang out let me know if there's enough of us maybe we'll plan a party out there because um, I'm a huge drift nut drift fanatic I love racing and cars and always have and so I'm always at those events because I'm here in Southern California also if anybody's going to be you know, in the LA area for NFT LA, I'm happy to meet up. Uh, our office is, you know, here in Lake Forest, Orange County, California. Uh, we're always happy to have you guys come by the office, meet with us in person. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So that information's out there. It's, it's, it's not something that we're, you know, trying to hide. Uh, we're happy that you guys know who we are. We've always wanted to, you know, be a forward facing project, uh, these are all real pictures of real people that you can come and meet in person, mostly in California. <laughs> we obviously have partners that are all over the world, but, uh, you know, we've got team in Chicago, we've got team in UK, uh, and, uh, the, the majority of our team is here in Southern California though. Um, uh, and I'm happy to, you know, meet up with you guys, go out to lunch, you know, uh, discuss the project, discuss NFTs in general. Um, we're absolutely, in my opinion, probably one of the most forward-facing teams that, that there is in the space. So, Well, thank, thank you so much. much. Uh
you've helped uh, me a lot and i guess the last question about uh, the rug and whatnot was just more uh, about me not instantly seeing like her face sure so sure people use their profile pictures i get it uh, but what you're doing is great uh everything what you just said mentioned was great it's good it's just good <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Don't forget to buy a Zero Fox Given t-shirt. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. Absolutely. We'll be giving some away, though. I'm going to I'm gonna figure out a way to give a bunch of them away to you guys if you guys are down to have them shipped to your houses, you know, or your places of business or any addresses that you can come up with. <laughs> Will we be able to buy merch with the Solana token? Absolutely. So we're actually trying to release the merch prior to that uh like on an e-commerce uh, version uh of this so it'd be like store.solanaverse.world or solanaverse.store or something like that um and so uh, as as the verse token becomes available it'll absolutely be uh, accepted for that and we'll actually have special merch that is only available for sale with verse token for the day of the dead with ofrenda token so uh each one of those tokens will be able to get you special merch that only holders of those tokens will be able to buy, but we'll also have, you know, uh, like a lot of the base merch, you know, just normal Solanaverse shirts and Soul Sand shirts and Day of the Dead shirts available uh, for purchase. It's something that I'm working on here. I just, there's been, a t I still work a day job, so you gotta understand, all of us do <laughs> on the team. So, uh, you know, I, I, got a lot going on there and i'm trying to do as much as i possibly can on, on on this side of it as well but um we absolutely want to have merch for you guys as soon as possible it's something that we've been talking about a lot over the course of the last few weeks um and i was originally going to just release it on the zero box given store but i decided that it's probably best if we have it on the Solanaverse store so um it's something that we'll hopefully be rolling out you know very very soon early early q2 i think we'll have uh, merch available for you guys Will you hire more people that were full time on the development of the Solana first? Absolutely. So a lot of the third parties that we're working with, that's their full time job is, is developing Solanaverse. Uh, in terms of like me, I would love for that to be my full time job and the only thing that I have to worry about. Um, I just, you know, I wasn't in a position where I could completely step away from my, my other company. Um, you know, and I, I, I'm working towards that goal. Uh, every day I'm spending, you know, I'm able to spend more and more time on this project. Um, you know, but it's, it's if, if you've ever been in that, it's very hard to, to find somebody to replace yourself. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of people that do an okay or a good job, but I, I have a hard time finding someone who lives up to my expectation when it comes to doing what I do. Um, but if I can find the right person to take over my spot, uh, then I would 100% be full-time on Solanaverse. Uh, we're absolutely putting uh, more effort and energy into that. We're constantly adding to the team. Uh, we have a meeting today with uh, a lore writer. We sp met with a couple of guys who have worked on some big Hollywood movies last week uh, to come in and help write lore for us. We're also bringing in uh, another... Uh, guy who's been in the lore and gaming space for a long time so you know a lot of uh writing support has been coming in recently and we're we're working on some of those deals this week um it's never ending and uh you know in, in this space I, I it's hard to find people that literally only work on one thing i think you know all of us are kind of multitaskers and and, and doing as much as we possibly can you know uh, that's why we got into this space in the first place is because we're always hustling and looking for more um, but absolutely, I mean, uh, as we continue on, the goal is obviously to have uh, more and more effort and emphasis and, and, you know, a larger and larger team. It's, it's going to take, you know, a village to build Solanaverse, uh, and we're slowly starting to, to build that village, so. Awesome. What percentage of the project uh, leadership would you say has skin in the game, so to speak, like their own money that they bought, used to buy Soul Sands? All of us. So everybody on the core team, uh, we didn't like go get money uh, from somewhere to do this. We all took our own money and put it in to start this. Um, I think with Day of the Dead, 
uh, the five of us that were on the core team for that project put in almost a hundred thousand to and only made about a hundred thousand, if that. So we just barely uh, broke even with that project. Um, there's still some for sale, and you know I'm hoping obviously with the free mint, you know we're still putting money into that, right? Like I'm hoping with the free mint uh, and now the cross mint functionalities, we're working on getting that set up so that people can purchase with credit card uh, a lot that was going into that uh but that's all personal funds you know the all the funds for soul sand um was also put up by the team so that's all our personal money that we put in so you know that's i think over one hundred twenty thousand spent just in development alone prior to mint right um in case you know not everyone knows like how much goes into marketing and how much goes into building these projects right so that's all money we spent up front, all time we spent up front. All of us had to work our full-time jobs doing it um, and doing that on top of it, right? So, you know, uh, it's not like all of us were a bunch of, 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 you know, crypto whales that had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, because we all bought, you know, thousands of Bitcoins at a dollar, right? Like, uh, you know, it's all hard-earned money that we all had to put in. Um, and, you know, we continue to, to put in time, effort, energy, and money uh, on a high level. So all of us on the team, uh, have a minimum of 10, uh, soul sand and three day of the dead. And a lot of us have more than that. That's awesome to hear. I like that. I like it when leadership has skin in the game. So that's awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. We will then those NFTs be staked. So, and those volatiles be known. So we know for sure it's bound to a contract for at least like eight or 10 months or a year. I'm happy. You cannot take them out and run away. Like, like I think that happy will make that. older people who are doubters yeah. feel more at ease. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Any, and, and I can't. You guys are not going anywhere either way. <laughs> yeah. I can't speak for, for everybody on the team. I, I mean, I know they're not going anywhere, right? Like, I, I would track them down if I if they went anywhere. But, um, yeah, I'm happy to, you know, as soon as staking starts, be the first one to stake. I'll, I'll be the Joe Biden taking the shot on TV, right? Like, I'll, I'll stream it if you guys want and I'll stake them all and give you the wallet address and they will be in there for the long haul. I, to me, this project isn't about making money tomorrow or the next day or even this year. Uh, you know, th to me, right, this to make money, th the money will be made in this project when it when it really gets to 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 full full mass. Right. When, you know, all, all the verse that I've earned from staking alone would be enough uh, you know and if i sold the land forget it right and so to, to me it's always been a long-term play i know to all the guys on the team it's a long-term play um you know this isn't something that we were hoping to you know get rich quick overnight right like um you know it's it's done in stages there's different pieces and aspects and moving parts and you know obviously we're we're looking to uh fund the project you know with nft drops as well as raise of of, of token you know token raise um, all these things kind of fit together uh, to, to bring us to the next level. And then we understand, obviously, that there's going to be, you know, sponsorships and selling land that's going to be part of this, right? But, yeah, absolutely, you know, you won't see me sell. I, I think I've sold, out of all the NFTs I've, I've bought, you guys, I think I sold two, and it's because I needed extra money to put into this project. <laughs> all the rest of them I still have, you know, some of them good, some of them bad, Uh I just, for whatever reason, you know, I believe in the space and I believe in NFTs to the point of, you know, yeah, there's plenty that I probably lost a lot of money on. Um, but, you know, ultimately, if I if I believe in the in the future of, of where some of these projects are going, I was I was a gambling apes holder, you know, minted during a whitelist. Right. And if you guys I, I know a lot of you guys are Solana specific, but gambling apes is this is like back in. September, August, somewhere in there, like uh, right around the first hype wave, right? Um, these guys are building, you know, a casino in the metaverse. They were the first ones to talk about, you know, now every, I, I get 10 DMs a day. Hey, we're building a casino, you know? And, uh, but these guys were like one of the first ones talking about it. And any game, gambling apes holders are, are you know, own, own uh, percentage rights in that casino. And still to this day, I hold uh, one of them. Right, uh, and you know, it's months now, and, and not a, not a word really. Kind of uh, part of that's me maybe not getting in there enough. I mean, I uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, 
most of my time is spent on our project. <laughs> I have very, very little time to look into other projects. Um, you know, somebody might say, hey, I'm going to get this. And I'll say, uh, if you think it's worth it, let me look at it real fast. But honestly, like all of my time that's spent looking at other projects is whether or not we can do collab with them and it's worth it. Uh, and then the rest of my time, you know, is, is spent on ours. So um, I, I guess maybe I should look into where I'm at with that one. But still, I know that the casino hasn't been built yet. So. Uh, that part I would know for sure, you know, and um, it's just one of those things. I mean, I don't want to be that kind of project. I want to be the type of project where, you know, we're delivering, we're, we're, we're sticking to timelines and, you know, the, the future is, is real and, and, and it's tangible and it's, it's, it's big, you know. Um, and so, you know, the more that I can do, I'm, again, we're all holders, right? So the, the more good things happen for the project, the more it increases our holdings, right? Um you know, we're definitely not going anywhere. I can assure you guys of that. So, UG, I heard you say free mint. Can you expand on? Oh yeah, so uh, free mint right now is live free mint uh, on Solana for the Day of the Dead NFTs. Um, the way that it works is it's a reward for anyone who supported our first project. So. Uh, anybody that holds a Day of the Dead NFT on Ethereum, uh, is there's a claim form. They can get a special role in the server called Deadified, if you guys see it, right? There's even a special categ or, uh, category called DOTD. It has all the links and everything. There's actually a giveaway we're doing right now that's been in place since the beginning. So there's a special Day of the Dead Girl NFT in the original collection. Whoever mints her uh, wins like $7,777 instantly. There's only 314 Day of the Dead left to be minted. So it's like a 1 in 314 chance to win seven grand, almost 8 grand. Um, and everybody who has one of the original Day of the Deads, uh, they fill out a claim form. They give us their Ethereum wallet address and their Solana wallet address. We go and verify that they hold uh, however many Day of the Dead they say they hold in the Ethereum wallet, and then we send them free mint tokens on Solana. And then they're able to go to the free mint URL and literally mint Day of the Dead on Solana for free. So Day of the Dead on Solana, they will yield verse tokens. Day of the Dead on Ethereum will yield a token that's an ERC-20 token called Ofrenda. Both of those tokens are gonna, obviously verse you guys are familiar with what that does uh, and is. Ofren, the token, is going to have a special utility within the Solanaverse. We're planning on building a graveyard in there where people are able to remember lost loved ones digitally. So uh, those tokens will be spent on, you know, tombs, flowers, headstones, uh, things to that effect in the graveyard where people can, you know, basically put up memorials to, to loved ones that they've lost in the metaverse. Um, and so that's kind of where that all ties in uh, together. I was, actually was... Also, if you guys tying this into, you know, forward facing, I think I can find a link. It might even be on the website. Um, I did an interview with uh, NBC News um, about the Day of the Dead project right around the time that that was dropping. So, you know, just to kind of lend to more, you know, we've been forward facing from the beginning. You know, that's me talking to a national news syndicate with my real name, you know, the entire thing, same name I've given you guys, right? Like... Um, same name on my LinkedIn profile, same name on my business card, you know, same name on my driver's license, same name that I KYC'd with in, you know, all, all the different uh, centralized exchanges that I'm a part of, same same name that I'll continue to KYC with. Uh, it's not going anywhere. It's not changing. That's who I am. <laughs> so, But even there, yeah, you can see that. And that's to answer the free mint question. Absolutely. Anybody who holds one of those gets a free one uh, on Solana. And the ones on Solana will yield first tokens. So okay, we can we have to buy a first to Ethereum, and then we can get Solana. Right, right. It's like a buy one get one free kind of. So, but they're cheap in the Ethereum marketplace now. A lot of projects are selling for like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ETH. This project's 0 0.0777. So it's like two, three hundred bucks, and then you're getting two nfts one on ethereum and one on uh solana and they both will yield uh some type of token that's going to be usable in solanaverse so the art is actually cool. sick too I, yeah i'm a big fan of the art on that project as well 
And there are going to be no Solana NFTs minted besides the free mint? Besides the free ones, exactly, yeah. We will be putting them on Magic Eden, uh, secondary market-wise. We're waiting to see how many mint. Uh, at a certain point, we'll probably say, okay, that's the end of it, and we'll just burn the rest. So um, I'm not sure exactly you know, when. For right now, I want to try to you know, get the rest of them gone. There's only 314 left, so you know, and one of them wins... You know, one of them gets minted, and the the, the minter wins seven thousand something dollars instantly. So, um, Mr. Criminal, if you guys know him, he's a, a pretty famous rapper. He is in, uh, involved with that project, and uh, very very soon, I'm gonna. We've been speaking to him this week. I'm, he's just busy making a new album right now, but I'm gonna. He's gonna try to get some time for us to uh, post about it. So, you know, he's got a really large following. Uh, on YouTube and on Twitter, and so hopefully he, you know, he makes one or two posts, and I would think the rest of them are gone. Three hundred and fourteen, you know, NFTs isn't a whole lot. So um, once that's done, that mint, you know, we'll try to leave it open as long as we can. But obviously, we want to, you know, get them on secondary. Not that I want anyone to sell them, but if they wanted to, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the the plans there, and you know. If that shows you guys anything, that's that's our first project that didn't even sell out, and we're still supporting it to this day. So, and since they are so limited, uh, what is the, the 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 first token percentage? It's gonna be it's gonna be more equal to what kind of rarity compared that to the sandstones? Sorry. No, no, it's a great question. So uh, we haven't specified it just yet um i know that the amount that will be allocated for uh day of the dead on an amount level is less but as you said there's a lot less of them um so i i don't think that they'll be like on par with an epic uh where there was only 50 epics ever right um uh, glass i think there was very very similar in the amount of uh glass available like 700 something glass or 900 something so there i think there's less Day of the Dead girls available than there are glass tier uh, soul sands. So, um, you know, sticking with the theme of, of you know, everything's based on, on rarity, uh, it would be somewhere kind of equivalent to what a glass is getting. Um, somewhere in that neighborhood. And then when we kind of introduce some of this staking stuff, uh, anybody who supports all of our projects, right, is going to, you know, reap the most benefit. So if you have Day of the Dead and Soul Sand and a Soul Drifter, right um then obviously like staking all of those things is going to yield better benefits than just staking a soul sand or just staking a, a soul drifter or just staking a day to dead right um so the people that are like truly supporting the project from every front will you know be able to to reap the most benefit awesome thank you absolutely i know there's one uh gm dune i think he has 22 Day of the Dead Girls <laughs> or something like that. He has a ton of them. So, um, yeah, we're always, you know, looking at, at, at doing stuff like that and trying to keep in that same premise of, of rewarding, you know, you guys that support the project. So, What is the difference between the Soul Bridge Discovery, the Soul Stone? That's a good question as well. So, uh these are just teasers uh, that are all kind of part of what's going to be making up the game trailer that we're working on right now. Um, and so, uh, let's see, let me just pop them up here real quick. I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong one. Um, so they're not NFTs, they're just part of the play, the gameplay. Right, so those, those are those are little little teaser videos of, of the game that we're the game development that's already gone ongoing right so uh in the soul drifters video that's essentially just like um a teaser of the avatar actually walking around in the environment uh, and that's just one avatar obviously that's like the base avatar but uh you know that way you can see him walking around soul stone is um that one's like a more to show off the soul stone and then also to show off uh, a larger portion of the environment so um, it's not just going to be limited to only sand, you know, we're going to be making mountains and, and snow and 
we're going to be incorporating a lot of different aspects as far as that inner inner immersive experience goes. Uh, I know one of the things we are really excited about is like wingsuits. So there's going to be, you know, part where you're able to get wingsuits and kind of like do like a glide down. Like if you climb up to the top of, I'm just throwing a name out here, Mount Solana or whatever, like that you'll be able to, you know, put a wingsuit and like do like a, a wingsuit course and stuff on the way down. That's something that we've already been experimenting with. Um, but this just kind of shows, this whole stone video just kind of shows off, uh, you know, a lot of the environment. Uh, Discovery, this is kind of like uh, our envisioning of, you know, when the Soul Drifter uh, had just come through the Soul Bridge. So uh, the last thing I want to do is equate it to a Stargate because I don't really feel like that's what it is. I know it, it but essentially uh, in the lore that we've already got written, um, you know, there was like some tomb or, or some tombs that were found in Egypt and an archaeologist team stumbled across the Soul Bridge, which is essentially you know, the gateway between worlds, right? And so, you know, then they, they end up going through the bridge and, and end up finding, you know, uh, the Solaniverse, right? So, um, and again, it might, we probably have a name for this planet where, you know, we've been calling everyone Solarians for a long, long time here. So, you know, maybe we'll call the planet Solaria. Um, again, this is stuff that we're like still working. Again, we're just now hiring more lore writers to come in and help really, really take the lore to the next level. Some of these guys have even, you know, written scripts for major Hollywood movies. And I, I don't want to, like, put the names out there just yet, but as soon as we have something, you know, more finalized with these guys, then you guys are going to get that news. So not long at all. Uh, and then Soul Bridge is uh, one of the, the first teasers that we uh, had finished working on, just kind of showing what it would essentially look like when someone's you know, going through this, this bridge into uh, a new world, right? So, uh, you know, that's kind of like where we started and, and where we've been going and, and the art's obviously been progressing and, and we're just continuing to try to push it to the next level. Uh, you know, there's there's more obviously coming and, and the kind of the further we get into this, there's just going to be even more and more. And it's like a really exciting time now because uh, a lot of the work over the last two months is finally coming to fruition and, and we're able to like share it with you guys it's to a point where we actually can um and so you know it really makes us happy on the team side of things to be at a point where we're able to share this with you guys and, and, and show you guys kind of you know where we're going and, and what we've come up with so far so so I've got one final question for you. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure quarter three is when the land drops. But then I also heard you say, hopefully by the end of the year, it'll be a playable game. So what form will that, that land take in quarter three if it's not yet playable? Is it just the NFT or is it something we can actually visualize? Yeah, no, it would be it would be an NFT and potentially more than that. Uh, what I think is we'll definitely get to the level of like the land interaction uh, kind of like how Sandbox did it in stages and I still don't think they're even uh, fully connected yet but uh, where you're able to build on your own land and then kind of like hop from your land to somebody else's land but that's still more on almost like a portals level right like where you have a room or a single piece of land and they're not connected we're really striving to get to that level just beyond where Decentraland is where you know all this buildable land all this own land is connected and you know you can walk through it and beyond walk through it like you know actually gameplay through it right um and so we'll know more as we get closer to that you know um i i, I don't want to put words into the dev's mouth or anything like that but you know um the the goal is to get you guys of some form of land that's actually usable beyond just looking at it in your wallet by q3 and you know some type of actual alpha release uh by q4 gotcha okay thanks sure will, will our land be connected to sandbox or decentral land in any way we're, we're, we're actually working on that so the partnership with acno ledger is going to get us some meetings with sandbox and decentral land and we're going to talk to them about what that looks like and making that happen so um to me, the metaverse is all interconnected and endless, and, and that's the whole beauty of it is that, you know, you can kind of seamlessly go from one to the next to the next to the next. So that's definitely my vision and goal, 
um, we're working towards achieving that goal, and I'm really hoping that it takes place uh, sooner rather than later. But I think it's inevitable that that's where the space is going. So, um, absolutely, I hope so as soon as possible to answer the question. Um, we want to to make that happen. So, whether you know, I don't think it would be like you know, you run from off the edge of Solanaverse and into Decentraland. There'd probably be like a portal of some sort, or uh, again, maybe the Soul Bridge is what connects all these things and and you know i'd be extremely happy if that's how it goes um but yeah some type of of connectivity between between the metaverses absolutely that's a great concept uh yeah so uh slow bridge in either of those lands to get to the, the Solanaverse. absolutely yeah uh and you know if if they're not on board, we'll go buy land there and build it ourselves, you know? <laughs> so I could, I can assure you it's something I want to make happen. So, <laughs> But what you're saying is that land is not going to be a instance based experience. It's going to be one world, just like GTA. So in theory, other people could just walk over my lawn, my land. So, that's a that's a good question. I don't want it to be like Decentraland where everybody's just like tromping all over everybody else's land, right? Um, I do know that they can like you can actually lock your houses in there now and make it where people aren't and put fences up and make it where people aren't able to. One of the other things I disliked about Decentraland uh, is kind of how they they left it where a lot of that land once it's developed, you're like you're gonna have no choice. But to, like some people don't even have a road that touches their land, right? Like, and so you know that's something that we're obviously uh, going to try to avoid is having people walking all over everybody else's land. So, um, you know, one thing that we kind of toyed with a little bit was was the concept of like floating land. And so, I think if you wanted land that was like completely separate from everybody else, it's not something that's completely out of the question. Again, this is like in theory right now and, and something that we have to work towards obviously but um you know we do want it to be you know where you're it's a it's an open world map where you're able to walk you know from one side of the world to the other so you know there's going to be a lot of the map that isn't owned you know by anyone so to speak that's just part of of Solanimous, right that's just part of the game that's not going to be built on that you know exists for that reason of of making it where people can walk without having to walk through your land. Do other um, worlds have that? That is like land that's not owned just by just game. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, if, uh, essentially, I I hate to only you know go back to them, but yeah, essentially, is a great example of that. They have the like Genesis Plaza, and I think there's like four or five, maybe six other plazas um, mm -hmm. that aren't owned by anybody, and. Uh, they, they tried to get to there in a, in a good way, but I think there's there's a lot that we can learn from the way that they did it. I'll put it like that, right? Like they did a great job, and, and I still love it for what it is. But there's a lot that we can learn um, from the way that they did it to try to make it better for Solanaverse. So it's it's well, it's good to be the first one doing something. Sometimes it's always so good to be able to learn from other people's mistakes. But those are more hub kind of places. What was the question? But uh, those places you are, you are referring to are more hub, like hub. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. more they're more centralized hub. So it's style. not like a ten kilometer, you know, acre or uh, of like forest, and then there is like one or two small buildings owned by somebody else in the middle of, middle of nowhere forest. It's not like that. With like a small area of land that's owned by them. But then there's a massive area of just forest owned by the game surrounding it. That's not the case at all. Uh, so we're gonna we're we're gonna be looking at what that looks like. But I think there's gonna be a lot of area that is owned uh, by no one essentially, right? Like that's just part of the gameplay, um, or that's owned by the game. So when we look at it like that, I guess technically like all the holders, right? Uh, that's community land essentially for benefit of advancing the play the gameplay um and so uh it, but it won't be like land that's built on it'll be land that's used in the gameplay side of things right like so if there is a large forest for example right that's never being built in 
it would be because we intend on using that as something that has to do with the game, right? Um, uh, trails on the mountain, things like that, to that effect, if the, you know, d different beaches or, you know, uh, the oasis in the center of the desert, right? Uh, all these things, there's, there's going to be land that is just community land that isn't built on, uh, never will be. Right um, now, bringing in some of the corporate stuff, there's going to be specific land areas that they're going to want to buy up, and you know the goal isn't to give them better than what the holders have. The goal is to give us better value by bringing them around us. Right, so um, you know the last thing that I would ever want to see is is you know we go sell a bunch of land to corporations. It's all the better land, and everybody that has the most money is able to you know be take over the best area. Right. Uh, we want it to be the type of thing where it's, you know, controlled and owned by the community. Uh, so, you know, will there be larger areas that are undeveloped that are con con contingent upon the gameplay and part of the gameplay? Absolutely, I think, you know. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's still going to be in a way where, you know, again, for me, it's about moving through this space and seeing things and, and interacting with things, right? And so, you know, I want it to be a level of immersion that, that ends up being that way. But you can't have that if everyone's running on top of everyone else's land, right? But if they're running near it or by it, then you can. Still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just uh, processing. What you said is all um, good. No worries. Pretty much answered my question. Oh, I actually. My phrasing was a little. It's okay. Yeah, I, 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 I'm happy to. I, if we need to get, uh, you know, translation or you know, I'm happy to answer in a way that that it helps both of us, right? Like, uh, if there's. Yeah, a, it's, it, it is all good, but maybe it was a little far fetched on my part. My side. Awesome. Right on. Well, hopefully, hopefully, I was able to answer questions. Uh, this one, I know, you know, kind of has has run long, and obviously, it's it's because you know we had a need right now. So, as we start doing these every week, you know, thirty minutes an hour, uh, I think we'll try and and kind of cap them there, but. Um, before we, we end today, you know, is there anybody else has, you know, one last question, uh, they want to sneak in, um, before we kind of, kind of stop for today? appreciate all you guys taking the time uh, today uh, you know to be here and be part of this you know it obviously shows us that you guys care so um, you know hopefully it shows you guys that that we care as well and we're gonna continue having these uh, as one of you guys requested um, we were uh, you know we're gonna try to post a lot earlier than than we did this time so uh, let you guys know you know probably by Monday or Tuesday when next Friday's uh, will be. So um, I did say that we're going to be giving out an NFT. What I'll do is uh, as we review the information and kind of create the cheat sheet for today's AMA, um, we will pick which question we feel was the best uh, for the community and that person uh, will be our lucky winner uh, and we'll go ahead and make sure that they get a free NFT. And we'll try to do, you know, more giveaways as we move forward with these AMAs. So, obviously, there's a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. So, there's there's going to be a ton of stuff to be able to give away. And I'm excited to do it. So, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so, so much. Uh, you know, it's only possible because of our community and because of you guys. Uh, and, you know, we really, really appreciate and love you guys for that. So, I want to thank you again. And uh, this is DG. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. And, We'll be around if you guys want to get at us and ask us more questions. And obviously next Friday we'll have another AMA. So thanks you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate it.